We are very nearly ready. Um, so coming up next, just to let you know, um, you are in tent, oh, tent C. I had no idea. Uh, this is my favorite tent of, of all of them. Don't tell tent A, it'll get jealous. Uh, but tent A, where you are going to be uh, seeing an amazing talk uh, by Barney Livingston talking about his poetoid lyric cam. Have I pronounced that right? Sure, why not? Uh, so what I need, I, I need you to start clapping, but very, very gently. Can you start clapping very gently? And uh, yeah, and now just bring it up a bit, a bit more, a bit more, a bit more. Please welcome Pertoid Lyric Cam. Thank you. Um, my name's Barney. I'd like to talk to you about this Pertoid Lyric Cam thing that I made. Um, before I start, I'd like to give a, a disclaimer in case there are any real poets in the, in the room. Um, what this produces is probably best described as uh, prose poetry or free verse or maybe bad poetry. Um, if there are any actual poets, I'm quite interested in uh, collaborating to improve the poeticalness of it. Um, can, they, can the slides go on there? Shall I do it? <laughs> Um, so, I'll start with a demonstration. I'm going to take a poem of you all. Um, in case you're worried about being photographed, there's, uh, the actual image is only kept briefly and uh, is then thrown away and there's no network or anything. Um, if you're still worried, then hide your face now. <laughs> we have to wait for it to develop. Um, I've no idea what it's going to say. I apologize if it's uh, less than complimentary. Here we go. <clears throat> the city. A group of people sitting on a bench. Many images of people on a city street. People are sitting while standing in a street under flags. City standing kids. The woman is talking near other kids standing in the street. Kids. <laughs> okay, so how did that work? Inside there is a Raspberry Pi B+. Uh, until recently there was a 3B, but I seem to have uh, killed the serial on that recently. Um, there's a Pi camera in the front. Um, a, a nano thermal printer from Adafruit, uh, two 18650 lithium batteries, um, they're in series to make about eight volts. There's uh, a Pimeroni wide input shim uh, attached to the Pi, and um, so the printer wants five to nine volts, and the Pi and shim wants three to sixteen volts. So uh, they both work within the range of the batteries. Um, the batteries tend to last more than a day, I find. Um, so for the camera itself, um, it's, it was originally called Super Color Swinger by Polaroid, made in about 1975. It was a pretty terrible camera, um, and the film's no longer made, so I don't feel guilty about gutting it. Um, uh, it's the, there's a, it has the advantage of having a lot of space inside, um, and I was able to keep the shutter button working, uh, and it has a handy locking function. This is the third version of uh, this, the first version I made for EMF in 2016. Um, it used to uh, send the poem to a server in my house via the uh, Wi-Fi. And if you remember EMF in 2016, the Wi-Fi was not very reliable, so the camera wasn't very reliable. So I was determined to make it uh, entirely self-contained, which I've done. Um, the second iteration was a bit much too slow. <laughs> It took about close to a minute for a poem to come out. Um, but I've spent quite a lot of time fixing that. And as you saw, it's quite a lot reasonably quicker now. Um, so before I talk about the intricacies of the software, I'd like to go back and have a look at the history of how this project came about. 1916, 
During the Second World, the First World War, sorry, um, a group of artist refugees gathered in Zurich. Their reaction to the horror going on around them was to abandon the usual forms of art and embrace the absurd. They chose a name from their group by selecting a word at random from a French-German dictionary. That name was Dada. A prominent member of the group was the Romanian poet Tristan Zara. The Dadaist wrote a lot of manifestos. In 1920, he wrote the manifesto on feeble love and bitter love, in which he gave instructions for how to make a Dadaist poem. To make a Dadaist poem, take a newspaper, take some scissors, choose from the paper an article of length you want to make your poem. Cut out the article. Next, carefully cut out each of the words that makes up this article and put them all in a bag. Shake gently. Next, take out each cutting, one after the other. Copy conscientiously in the order in which they left the bag. The poem will resemble you. And there you are, an infinitely original author of charming sensibility, even though unappreciated by the vulgar herd. Yeah. This became known as the cut-up technique. Several people across literature have employed the cut-up across literature and music have employed the cut-up technique. The beat author, uh, William S. Burroughs, used it in several of his books. After his friend and collaborator, Brian Geisen, rediscovered the technique by accident by, while cutting out um, a mount for a drawing with a Stanley blade on top of a pile of newspapers. Tom York from Radiohead used it in Radiohead's Kid A album, and also this chap. When we were in Los Angeles in 74, you were still using that technique of cut-ups. Do you still use it, or do you do...? Yeah, yeah. Um, increasingly so, to a great extent on outside. Uh, even, say, on the new album, Earthly. If you put three or four disassociated ideas together um, and created awkward relationships with them, the, the unconscious intelligence that comes from that, those pairings um, it is really quite startling sometimes, quite, quite, quite provocative. A friend of mine in San Francisco developed a program for me on the computer, which enables me to do it really quickly. So instead of going to the laborious process of cutting, cutting things up, you yeah. use your computer. Yeah, and you can and you can work with far more material. So I'll take articles out of newspapers, uh, poems that I've written pieces of other people's books um, and put them all into this little warehouse of, of this container of, of information and then hit, hit the, pro, uh, the, the random button and it'll randomize everything and I'll get reams of papers back out of it with uh, interesting ideas. And then I'll either take sentences verbatim as it, as it spews them out or there might be something within a sentence which triggers off an idea. I love how pleased he is with, uh, with his program. I think I'd have liked to have been David Bowie's software developer. Uh, around all this, uh, during all this time I was born. Um, growing up, I suppose the influence of the uh, Dadaists uh, was, came to me through the, um, this country tradition of absurdist comedy. Spike Milk and Monty Python, Vic and Bob, all that lot. Um, probably my first encounter with generating text came in the form of Mrs. Hathaway's knickers. This was a children's party game invented by my grandfather. Uh, each child was given a piece of paper with a noun or noun phrase written on it. The adult would start reading from a book. At some point they would point at the child and that child would then read the word. For example, Mrs. Hathaway's knickers. Mrs. Hathaway being one of my mum's teachers. This was hilarious. Like many of here at my age, I learned to program on a, uh, a, BBC, uh, on a BBC Micro. Uh, so that, the, in fact, the exact BBC Micro is over in the bar showing Twitter at the moment. Um, when I was about 13, my friend Peter Jones, not that one, and I collaborated on a program called Ode. I'll demonstrate it now. So well. So 
So, as you can see, the first line is based on the, uh, uh, the title of the poem by the poet master Gruntos the Flatulent of the Asgolds of Korea, the second worst poet in, poets in the galaxy, from the section on Bogon poetry in Douglas Adams' Hitchhiker's Guide. Uh, this is basically a more sophisticated version of Mrs. Hathaway's knickers, in that it, uh, as well as nouns, it incorporates verbs, adjectives, and present participles. Uh, it, it consists of a, a large amount of very buggy spaghetti code. Uh, and you can probably see some bugs sometimes. But it's at its heart, there are two lines. Uh, two lines are templates with placeholder variables that are replaced by words or chunks of text selected at random from lists uh, of the appropriate type. This is similar to the game Mad Libs. Uh, with the right choice of templates and carefully crafted lists, this technique can be used to produce some interesting and amusing results. Much better nodes, certainly. Factbot1 is a Twitter bot written by Eric Drass, which, display, which plays with the idea of that people on Twitter, generally, or, and generally, will believe plausible sounding facts. This bot dates back to before the current fake news disaster. You can hear more about it from him, in fact, uh, shortly after this talk in stage B. Frequently, it's not quite as plausible, though. Um, Yoko Ono bot by Rob Manuel of the Beaters um, combines uh, templates based on Yoko Ono's tweets and writings with text from several lists, of things like foods, computers, and celebrities. Um, Tracery is a JavaScript library written by Kate Compton, which uses grammars described in JSON, um, it, which so produce, they produce text in a, sim, in a similar way. So the um, there's, these words are replaced by uh, items from these lists, and uh, the results come out like that. Um, this is used by a site called cheapbotsdonequick.com, created by George Buckingham, that allows anyone to make Twitter bots easily. Uh, and, and many have. And uh, I think they tend to make Twitter slightly less horrible than it is generally. These are a couple of my favorites. This is a, uh, like a kind of a Dungeons and Dragons based in Ikea. And there uh, are some tasty bargains. So anyway, back to stuff I made. Um, Markov chains. I first discovered these when playing with a dissociated text program built into the text editor Emacs, which is very strange in itself as I'm a VI user. Uh, Markov chains are built from existing bodies of text which are cut up, usually into single words, and then a graph is built by creating, uh, which encodes the likelihood that a word will be followed by another word. The graph can then be traversed randomly to build a new, new text similar to the original and usually somewhat grammatically correct. It's probably easier if I demonstrate this. Right, so at the top is a, word, is a sentence that we're going to um, take apart and turn into a graph. So start with A, and that's a, so we have an edge going to A, and then we take Markov, and that comes off A, and chain, is, and then from is, we go back to A, and uh, stochastic from A, model, and then stop. That's the end of the sentence. Just help you out here. Okay, and then we have another sentence. So, same thing, we start at the start node, then we have Andre Markov, we already had Markov, so we go back to there. Was. Here. A, again, back to the A node, it's a popular node. Russian mathematician. And stop. Okay, final sentence. A cat is a furry mammal. So, what happens this time? Start, then to A. But we've already got A from start, we already have from start to A, so we've updated the edge to two. 
and then cat comes off a, and then is, and then we already have an edge from is to a, so that becomes two, and then furry mammal, and stop. Okay, so now we have a complete graph of our text. We can, I can show you what it happens if we traverse it. So we start at start, then for instance, it's quite likely that we go to A because it's two vertices one. So we have A. Then we can say, go to cat. Then we can go to is. Then we have to go back to A. And then we can go anywhere we like. So we could say, stochastic model. A cat is a stochastic model. There we go. Okay, we can do it again. Start. We can, this time maybe we go to Andre Markov was a furry mammal, and so on. Oops, don't say I'm uh, Yeah, that's, that's how Markov chains work for generating text. Uh, generally, the larger the body of text you feed it, the better the results, because uh, you'll have more variety. Um, Sam R. Cosgrave is a Twitter bot that I've made based on Markov chains. Um, what it does is it regularly searches Twitter for, high, for in, uh, the hashtag haiku and records what it finds. It's been running for several years now and has accumulated close to 900,000 haikus. Uh, it then uses these to build three Markov chains, one per line. There's another example of its output here. Should be. Let me stop. Okay. Uh, Inspire Ration is another Markov bot I made. Um, this one feeds on thousands of inspirational quote type text. Type text. Um, Markov chain text tends to be quite incoherent, but sometimes it will spit out the occasional gem. Eventually I got bored with Markov chains and moved on to AI. Uh, I started playing with uh, character recurrent neural networks, char RNNs, in the Torch framework. Um, these can be used in kind of a similar way to Markov chains in that you feed them a large body of text and then they learn how to produce text that looks somewhat like the original. So I had a laugh with that and produced some bizarre new episodes of Friends. Then I found neural, net, neural talk 2 model. Uh, this is a neural network that takes an image as input and produces captions. It's trained on the MS Coco dataset, which is a set of about 300,000 photos with five captions each. Um, this is what I used to create the original Lyricam. Um, I, I noticed that the captions, when I was playing with it, had a kind of vaguely poetic feeling. Um, in uh, November 2016, I took part in the Nano Genmo National Novel Generating Month, similar to Nano Rimo, but the aim was to spend a month generating a novel of 50,000 words. This is the result. AI AI. This is uh, an AI's take on the film AI. I extracted 5,036 stills from the movie and had Neural Talk 2 produce a caption for each. Then I formatted the captions into sentences, possibly joining two. Then paragraphs from sets of sentences and chapters from number of paragraphs. Chapter titles are, f are the most common five or more letter word from the chapter. Uh, that's not already been a chapter title. Finally, I formatted it all through LaTeX to produce JPEG, not JPEG PDF. Then my friend Libby was kind enough to get one printed for me. I'll read you a sample. Chapter. <coughs> Chapter 9, Picture. The nameless are located on the slippery side of the indiscernible. A man is taking a picture of a mirror. Lighted man with train bike looking bed at window and a man is taking a picture of himself in a mirror. There is a man in a restaurant using the phone. A woman is holding a, ca a cat in a kitchen. I'm afraid you can't get much sense of the, uh, of the, of the film from the book. 
But he occasionally talks about ch uh, children and teddy bears, which I gather is in the film. I've not actually seen it. So anyway, back to the camera. Uh, Torch doesn't work on Raspberry Pis, so I had to switch to using TensorFlow. Um, again, this is, uh, oh, and the M2 text model, which is the same as uh, Neural Talk 2, but, and are similarly trained on AMS Coco's data set. So when the shutter's pressed, an image is captured and stored in a Python array. This is then passed to the neural net, and four captions are generated. Neural Talk 2 had an option called temperature, which you could use to adjust the sensibleness of the output. I generally had it turned down to uh, quite insensible. Um, into text is more sensible in that it always tries to create the most accurate cap captions possible. So I had to modify it to, to dumb down the search code and introduce a random element. Captions are then cleaned up and fed through the, the eng tagger library, which tags each word with a part of speech, nouns, verbs, adjectives, prepositions, etc. Then there's a random chance that it will break the line on our, on our verb, a conjunction like and or or, or a preposition like for or of. This kind of makes a, a vaguely poem-shaped block of text. Sometimes, sometimes it will repeat, repeat some of the, word, the nouns in list form. Finally, the results sent to the printer. So that's it. At the, as I said at the start, I'd love to improve the quality of the poetry. Uh, and I'd be interested in collaborating with people on that. There's a lot of scope for employing various techniques for transforming the captions. I'd also like to investigate changing the, the neural net to be more poetic. The only reason I haven't looked into this is uh, that on the hardware I've got, training the, uh, the model from scratch would probably take weeks. Um, so I'll be wandering around for the uh, rest of the event with my poet's hat on, uh, taking poems, if you'd like one. Um, please ask. Uh, these are my contact details. I also should thank my employer, Lobster Pictures, for being understanding while I prepared this talk and prepared for EMF. Thank you. Uh, does anyone have any questions for our speaker? Okay. I have to wait for it to develop. Anyone else have a question? We can, uh, I can read it afterwards. There you go. Hi. Uh, how big is the database of images and text that you use in the Raspberry Pi? Well, the original database of images was 300,000 or so. Uh, but the model that it produces, I think the file, the, the checkpoint file is it's about 180 megabytes or something like that, uh, it, which fits quite comfortably in RAM. It takes about a minute to load off the, um, off the SD card though. Okay, do we want to hear this? Ode to the two glasses of wine. <laughs> An older fellow is wearing green hmm? and white. Looks like a tie. A man wearing a tie and a hat looks at their teeth <laughs> for the evening. An older man wearing a yellow shirt, taking two glasses of wine, he holding a glass. Hair. Any other questions? Well, then I think on uh, that lovely note, um, let's have another round of applause for our speaker.